We're about to review all of differential and integral calculus with parametric functions instead of uh, f of x uh, equals y. So just quick review of everything we did so far in calculus, pretty much. We had y equals f of x, and this was previously. Uh, but now, y and x are a function of t. Uh, and before, we could uh, write y prime, which meant dy dx, or just f prime of x. Now, we have parametric functions. We have x is a function of t, so x is really a, an x of t function and y is also a function of t, is y of t. A few things, a few problems this creates, one of them is if I just write x prime or, well really y prime because that's already on the board here. If I write y prime, in parametric functions, what I really mean is y prime of t. And I'm gonna try to avoid y prime, but just uh, in case I forget, when I write y prime in the context of parametric functions, when I write y prime, what I really mean is dy dt, the derivative of y with respect to the input variable. Whereas before, y prime meant with respect to x. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so this is different, again, than the old y prime. All right, so we're gonna start at the beginning so we have x of t and y of t functions. So one of the first things is, um, let's see, so that's y prime. Um, I could write x prime, but let's go ahead and look at slope of the curve. Now this curve is defined by the x of t and the y of t function. Now the slope of this curve, it's still dy over dx. Again, if you remember, dy dx was just f prime of x. But we don't have a function of x anymore. So the new derivative, or the slope, is going to be uh, a little bit strange. It's going to be dy uh, over dt times dt over dx. Now why is this equal? Because if you treat the derivative as a fraction, you could just cancel out the dt's and you get dy over dx. That's the reason it's equal. And most of the time this is going to be written with this fraction flipped over and divided. So you're usually going to see it written as dy dt divided by dx dt where each of these are the derivative of the x of t and the y of t function respectively. So if you really want to write with primes, this is y prime over x prime, where in this parametric function situation, y prime means dy dt, and what do we mean by x prime? x prime is dx dt. Okay, so that's the slope of a curve right there. Uh, usually in the textbook it's written in this form right here. Um, I don't recommend you use that form, that's just to write that final, uh, final version. And so that's the first derivative. Uh, second derivative is for concavity. So first derivative was slope, I better label that. First derivative uh, second derivative is the concavity of the curve. And you get concave up, remember, is a smiley face. Concave down, frowny face. Um, it just tells you which way it's curving. Okay, so we can write this down. Now again, I need to be very explicit about the derivative here. So I'm taking the second derivative of y with respect to x. That's why I have ddx, ddx of y. 
Okay, so this is equal to, uh, I'm gonna apply the first one and leave the second one out. Uh, we have written down what it is first, which is, let's go with this, that version, or maybe even that version right there. dy dt over dx over dt. All right, now we're gonna apply uh, this ddx in here. Uh, it turns out that it's just the second derivative of y at the top uh, with respect to t. So it's just ddt dy dt, and the bottom is left alone, dx dt. Uh, and you can write this, so this is the second derivative of y, so you could write it as y double prime, and it's a little bit weird, but the denominator is still just x prime. And it's, you could write it as y double prime over x prime. So that's a concavity of a curve. And what we're about to do is compute a tangent to a parametric curve. So in order to compute the tangent, we need the slope at a point, and then we can create a line. So that's our first example problem. Find tangent line to curve x is secant of t, y is tangent of t. And we're gonna look at, now of course, secant and tangent, the domains are not all real numbers. Uh, and we're gonna look at the point. This is not a t value, but at the point, square root two comma one. All right, so there's a few things we have to do. We know the point, but we need to turn this point into t values. So we need to figure out what t values uh, do we need. Or well, there should be just be one, there better be one t value. So first find t value. Uh, second, we need to get the slope. And our slope is the first equation I wrote down, this y prime over x prime. And third, get the equation of a line using that slope. All right, so let's find the t value first. So that's step one. Now, all I have is, I have an x and a y coordinate. So, x is secant t, and x is also square root two. I'm not terribly good at secants, so I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides, or I could write it as one over cosine t, now reciprocate, one over square root two equals cos t. Now there is infinite solutions to this, uh, so let's not worry about exactly which t value. Uh, the one that's in my mind is pi over four, but of course negative pi over four works and any uh, add any multiple two pi to those will also work for t. Uh, oop, we're not on step two, we're on the y. y is tangent. And now I'm going to plug in the y value, which is 1. 1 is tangent of t. And you could uh, rewrite this uh, in terms of sine over cosine, but just draw a quick unit circle. Tangent is 1 right in the middle of quadrant 1. It's also 1 in the middle of quadrant 3. So here we have pi over 4 would be the t value. And that also works for this cosine right here. Uh, so we're going to use t as pi over 4. Some of these problems may give you an interval that t has to be inside of, uh, but if not, you can pick whichever uh, t value uh, makes both of these equations true. Uh, so I could have also picked, what else? I can't pick the one down here because secant would be negative there, uh, but I could have picked 8, 9 pi over 4 if I wanted to but I'm not going to. Okay, so we got our t value. Now we're gonna find slope. So slope, remember it's dy over dx. 
Uh, I could scroll up and see that, but I believe it's just y prime over x prime. These are derivatives of x and y with respect to t. So keep that in mind. So here I have x on the left. Right above this, I'm going to just write down what's x prime. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. And derivative of tangent, y prime, is secant squared. OK. So numerator is secant squared. Denominator is secant tangent. And I can reduce one of these secants here. So it's just secant t over tan t. You can even reduce further. Tangent is cos. Well, you know, this is actually a great place to stop because I already actually know what uh, at t. Oh, I know cosine. Well, secant's 1 over cosine. OK, so now we're going to evaluate it at t equals pi over 4. And now it's a little bit tricky to write this down. So the way you write it, you do a vertical line. This looks a lot like your, uh, after you take an antiderivative, you'd have a and b right here. Uh, but we're only going to have one value, and we just put it at the bottom, and that's where you write the evaluated at t equals pi over 4. And so I'm evaluating secant over tangent at pi over 4, sec pi over 4, over tan pi over 4. And this is, let's see, secant is square root 2, and tangent is 1. So my slope is square root 2. OK, so we have the slope. We have a point. That's everything we need for the line. And I'll just call this m. Equation of the line. Please use point slope form unless you have a y-intercept. But generally, you don't have a y-intercept. So point slope form is the way to go. Uh, it is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And Probably a more useful form is just add y1 to the other side. And this also is a linearization of a function. Uh, so this is the one that's probably the best in, to use in calculus. Square root 2 is a slope. We already had the x value at the very beginning. Uh, it was somewhere square root 2 right there at the top. So x minus square root 2 plus y1, which was 1. All right, that's the equation of the line. Now this is the equation of the line in rectangular coordinates, not in uh, parameterized coordinates. We could do all of this in parameterized, and I'll do that really quickly here. So redo in parameterized. And if we do that, we're going to have a vectored valued a vector valued line. So we'll write it as uh, L for line of T. And there's going to be uh, just goes X prime, Y prime, and this is multiplied by T plus uh, X naught, Y naught. Or I guess I called it X1 and Y1 right there. So we already computed X prime somewhere up here. That was X, no. We're actually never plugged in x prime and y prime separately. All right, let's do that here. x prime is secant tangent. x prime t is secant t tangent t. And we're plugging in pi over 4 for this. So that is secant pi over 4 tangent pi over 4. Secant pi over 4 is square root 2. Tangent pi over 4 is 1. So we just get square root 2. So that's x prime. Now y prime, which I didn't really leave room for. y prime of t is just tangent squared. Or secant squared. There it is. y prime secant squared. I computed that earlier. Secant squared t. So now we just plug in. Pi over 4, 
Uh, we got square root 2 squared, uh, which is just regular 2. All right, so we have x prime and y prime evaluated at the right values. So our x prime is square root 2, y prime is 2, t plus, now the point we went through was square root 2, 1. So we can now combine this together. I'm going to multiply t inside here, square root 2t, comma, 2t, plus square root 2, 1. Now I'm adding the x and the y coordinates separately. So it's those two added together are the first coordinate of the vector, square root 2t plus square root 2, comma, 2t plus 1. All right, so that is the line, the parameterized version of a line. Same line, it's just the parameterized version of that line right there. Uh, the slope would be the, well, 2t divided by square root 2t, uh, which is a little bit weird, but 2t over square root 2t, if you rationalize it, which I hate doing, well, here we go. 2 is square root 2 times square root 2 divided by square root 2 reduces down to just square root 2 over 1 or square root 2. So it has the same slope as that line, passes through the same point when t equals 0, and that is a parameterized version. Okay, so that was a lot of calculus 1 there. Uh, now we're going to look at areas. All right, areas are integral a to b. It was f of x dx. So this is now going to be y, f of x is y, dx. All right, a few things are changing. Uh, the a and the b are now t values. Uh, so they're going to be different than they were before. So it's initial and final t value. And remember, y is now a function of t. Now the dx is a little bit funky. Uh, all that is is uh, dx is uh, dx dt times dt. And these are equal because the dt's would cancel out and you just get dx. And that's when you think of the derivative as a fraction. Sometimes it's useful to think of the derivative as a fraction um, and this is a perfect time for thinking in that manner. And now I'm going to substitute in everything we have here. Uh, so y is now y of t. dx is x prime t dt. And if you want to, you could just write it as y x prime dt. Uh, and I'll use the second to last version here. It does go a to b uh, where t starts at a and ends at b. So t is in the interval a to b. So before these were x values, the a and the b were x values, but now they are t values. And that's all we need for the area. Put that in a box because that's going to be useful. And now we're going to do a problem where we compute the area. So find the area of the asteroid, and this is uh, the name of a shape. And here I'm going to write both x and y in one uh, in a point form. So it's cos cubed of t sine cubed of t. So what that means, that's only just saying that the x of t function is cos cubed and the y of t is sine cubed. Okay. Area of the asteroid. Uh, generally, they're going to give you, in, in, in most of the questions you're going to get, they're going to give you initial and final t values. And in this problem, it goes 0 to 2 pi. All right, so we could graph this. Uh, if It's not really going to be that helpful, though, uh, to graph it. If this is not given to you, 
a lot of times it's good to start at zero. If you have trig functions, they're eventually going to repeat, they're periodic. So eventually you're gonna get uh, another T value that has the same X and Y as the first T value. Uh, and if we did that here, so let's say if we didn't know two pi, So if we're told to get the area of one loop, and we usually would give a starting uh, a t value, but if not, t equals zero is a great place to start. Um, and you just have to figure out what bigger t value gives the same x of t and y of t. So what I'm gonna do is plug in zero in for the x function. So this is cos cubed of zero, which is one cubed, and that's one. Y of zero is sine cubed zero, which is zero cubed, which is zero. All right, so our initial point, if I wrote it in x, y, is one, zero. What's the next t value where uh, x is one and y is zero? Uh, well, x will be 1 again. You have to go all the way to 2 pi before x gets back to 1. Uh, you want to be a little careful because if you just look at the sine cube function, sine is 0 at 1 pi, but both coordinates have to match, so you can't stop at 1 pi because at 1 pi, x would be negative 1, not positive 1. And so you'd have to go all the way to uh, t equals 2 pi is the next value, the next t value, where x and y have the same, same output values. Okay, so now we're ready to set up our integral. So we've written this down earlier. It is y of t times x prime of t dt. So area is y of t, x prime of t, dt. We know that t goes from zero. Remember this right here tells us this integral is a t integral. It's really important you know what variable you're integrating with respect to. So, oops, zero to two pi, not two t. Okay, y of t is sine cubed t. Uh, x prime, we did not compute yet, so let's go ahead. Uh, x prime of t is three cos squared of t times derivative of cos is negative sine t. And we'll write it as negative three cos squared t sine t. All right, so that is going here. cos squared t sine t dt, 0, 2 pi. All right, so we got a lot of sines, a lot of coses. There's sine to the fourth cos squared. All right, this is an annoying integral to do because we have to use some trig right here. If one of these powers was odd, this would be a lot easier to do, but this is the trig integral. Uh, we're gonna run way back to the last quarter, calc two, trigonometric integrals. Let's see, case one, case two, case three. All right, so we're gonna use these two identities. I'm gonna copy and paste them. Okay. Let me group these up so I can move them later. Group, okay. So we have zero to two pi. We're not changing variables. 
but we are using this identity. Now I have co-squared is perfect set up for this. Uh, sine, unfortunately I have sine to the fourth, so you could write it as sine squared t squared. So it's this whole thing squared. And sine squared x squared, I'm just squaring this out. We have one half squared is one fourth. One minus cos 2x squared. So it's 1 fourth. Uh, 1 minus 2 cos 2x because that's the outside inside. Plus negative cos 2x squared is positive cos squared 2x. And I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this as one half times one plus cos two x. Okay, now we're ready to make all this substitution. I shouldn't, this is uh, not changing, well, t is x. We're not changing the variable other than renaming it. So I don't need to change that. So this is not a proper u substitution. All right, sine squared squared is one fourth, one minus two cos two x plus cos squared two x times a half one plus cos two x. Oops, and these should all be t's. dt. All right, we have one fourth times a half is an eighth. All right, this is going to be annoying to multiply out. I'm going to multiply it out, but I'm not going to go further than that on this problem because you've done, hopefully done a lot of integrals like this before. Whew. I don't even want to distribute this. That's not going to be fun. All right, I'm just going to write dot, dot, dot. All right, so this should be an integral you did in calculus two before, and you would just do the same thing here and keep going and get the area. Okay, so that is how to do areas. Just remember, area was y dx, and now you have to change it to be functions of t. Sometimes it's better to do area as uh, x x dy, and if you did it that way, you'd have integral x of t, y prime t, dt. So that's a, if you wanted to integrate with respect to y instead of respect to x, most of the questions you're gonna get are gonna be uh, set up to integrate with respect to x. So you're gonna set them up and do them the way we just did this. Okay, that's area. Now, arc length. All right, what did arc length look like before? Before we had some curve. Let's put a curve with a couple more bends in it. You would just pick uh, two points right here, and we want to get the uh, distance between them. So that was L of K. This is the kth segment we're going to break this into, and that's square root. Uh, delta x squared plus delta y squared. Uh, and it was the integral, integral uh, a to b, uh, square root. Um, <clears throat> I'll just write the version out in with t coordinates uh, with parameterized functions instead of writing the original rectangular one out. All right, so this is integral square root. Now it's x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared, 
uh, because you had to square both of those. Then there's a DT outside, and again goes from A to B. Okay, remember x prime of t, it is the derivative with respect to t. So that is arc length right there. It's easy to write down, not necessarily always easy, easy to compute. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and find uh, the arc length around the perimeter of the asteroid. So our x was cos cubed t, uh, y was sine cubed t, uh, we're going t from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so what I need is x prime of t. So I think we computed this before. It's 3 cos squared t times negative sine t, or negative 3 cos squared t sine t. We do need to square these, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that right now. x prime squared, negative 3 squared is positive 9. Uh, cos squared is cos to the 4th t, because cos squared squared is cos to the 4th t, uh, sine squared t. Alright, so that's x prime, now we're going to get uh, x prime squared, so y prime is 3 sine squared t times cos t, y prime t squared, squaring all of these, so 3 squared is 9, sine squared squared is sine to the fourth t, uh, cos squared t. Okay, looks ugly, but this should work out a lot better than our last integral. So right, the arc length goes from A to B, square root, x prime t squared plus y prime t squared dt, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, I've already squared both of these, so I'm going to just plug in the squared versions. And you know, I'm going to write, I'll write it as 3 squared, not 9. So the 4t sine squared t plus 3 squared sine to the 4th t cos squared t dt. All right, we get to factor quite a bit. They both have a 3 squared. They both have cosines and sines. I can factor out a cos squared and a sine squared. And what we're left with is just cos squared in the first. And in the second one, what we're left with is sine squared. All right, what is cos squared plus sine squared? It's one. Now at this point in your algebra career, I'm going to let you just cancel that out. It cancels out to 1. Not to 0, but cancels to 1. All right. That's out. Now, if you notice, everything here is multiplied and squared. So it cancels the square root. So we have 3 cos t sine t dt 0 to 2 pi. Look at this. Not bad. How do we do a cos times a sine? This is a u sub. All right, this one's fun, so we'll finish it. You can either equal cos t or sine t, doesn't matter. I'm going to choose sine t because there's no additional negative sign that gets introduced. The derivative is cos t dt. That 3 can go out front. So we have u is sine t. And then everything else is du. Notice I did not put in the beginning and ending values because I'm going to unsubstitute before I plug those back in. So this is u squared. There are going to be values, u squared over 2. There are going to be values, but I'm going to unsub back to t's. So we have 3 halves. 
sine t, sine squared t, because u is sine t, so u squared sine squared. And now I'm ready to plug in the t values, which are 0 to 2 pi. All right, sine squared of 2 pi. Uh oh, I think we have a problem here. Minus sine squared of 0. Sine 2 pi, so that's 0 minus 0. That's not going to be correct. All right, so what happened was some of these were negative. This should not equal zero. I mean, it does equal zero, but it should not be zero. So we messed up somewhere. Hmm. Yes, all right, it's very subtle, but Everything is good above the line. When, so I'm just going to erase all this. Well, let me just slide all this stuff down. I've got to be a bit more careful here. All right, this done more carefully. I'm just going to split the square root up uh, into each of these three. This is okay to do, but when I cancel this, uh, three is no problem. That's square root three squared is three. No worries. But right here, cosine can be negative between zero and two pi. So this should be the absolute value of cos t. Uh, because when cosine is negative and you square it, it forces it to be positive. Same thing with sine. So this is what we get. Now cosine and sine are negative for part of this. So you could turn this into a step function. Instead, what I'm going to, and, and it would go, let's see. In quadrant one, they're both positive. Quadrant two, one of them is negative. Uh, cosine becomes negative in quadrant two. Quadrant three, they're both negative, so then their negatives are cancel in quadrant four. Sine is, is negative. All right, the asteroid graph looks like this. You can go to Desmos and graph it. I showed that in the last lecture. Uh, it looks like this right here. And this top point will be t equals pi over two. This will be t equals one pi, t equals three pi over two, and this will be t equals zero or two pi. So if we do one quarter of this and then multiply it by four, we'll get the same arc length. of one quarter. So that'll be t is between zero and pi over two. And then multiply by four. Okay. So everything we did so far down here is fine, except we're gonna be multiplying it by four. Four times three is 12. Uh, 12 over 2 is 6. So far so good, except this is what's changing here. We're just going to pi over 2. So we have sine squared pi over 2. And that's a 6 in front. 6 in front, all this is going to change. All right, what is uh, sine of pi over 2 is negative 1. So it's negative 1 squared minus 0. And we just get six. So that is the arc length of the asteroid is six. Okay, so that's arc length. Uh, the next we're gonna look at related to arc length is surface areas. All right, surface areas of revolution. All right, 
if we rotate about the x-axis, uh, this does require uh, y of t to be positive, greater than or equal to zero. Your surface area S is the integral a to b, 2 pi y of t times square root x prime t squared plus y prime t squared dt. Uh, if you rotate about x, uh, y axis, which means your x coordinate or your x of t needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, your surface area is similar, two pi, but now you have x of t from a to b, square root, x prime t squared plus y prime t squared dt. Okay, so these are our two surface area formulas, and we're going to find the surface area of the asteroid. We have computed, I believe, everything so far that we need, but there is one problem with our asteroid and that x and the y coordinates are sometimes negative. So a few ways to do it, we could just f take the upper half and rotate about the x-axis. And that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll take the upper half and that is t equals zero to t equals pi. You could use symmetry and just rotate the first quarter right there and double that, but I'll just go from uh, zero to pi. And we're rotating about the x-axis. So we're using the first version right there. So let's go ahead and write it out. Integral a to b, 2 pi y of t, square root, x prime t squared plus y prime t squared dt. Integral 0 to pi, 2 pi, y of t is sine cubed t. Now in here, we did all this work before. Uh, oh, we're going to have the same issue where when we pull them out of the square root, they need to be positive. So I changed my mind. We're just going to go 0 to pi over 2, and we're going to double this. So this is half of the surface area. We'll double it at the very end. My S looks just like an integral sign. All right. Now, we've done this computation already. And somewhere up here is before we integrated. This is cos t sine t is what that whole, or three, three cos t sine t. It did have absolute values. Times three times cos t absolute value sine t absolute value dt. All right. Good news is, because they're going zero to pi over two, cosine and sine are both positive in quadrant one between zero and pi over two. So I don't need absolute value anymore. That's great. You could bring the two pi up front, actually bring the three out as well. So that's six, six pi. I could multiply by two and get this half out of here, but I'll just leave it there until the end, just double it at the very last step. 0 to pi over 2, sine to the fourth, cos t dt. 
u equals sine t du cos t dt. We now have sine to the fourth, so it's u to the fourth du 6 pi 6 pi u to the fifth over 5. Unsubstitute 6 pi over 5 sine to the fifth t from 0 to pi over 2. And okay, 6 pi over 5 times sine to the fifth pi over 2 minus sine 0. Sine to the fifth of 0. All right, sine is sine of pi over 2 is 1, positive 1 to the fifth. Sine of 0 is 0. So we just get 6 fifths pi. But remember, that's not the full surface area. That's half the surface area. So the full surface area multiplied by 2, that's 12 pi over 5 is our surface area. OK, so that is how to do calculus on parametric curves. So just review quickly the difference at the very top of this. Just remember, your derivative looks different. So if you just write x prime and y prime, you have to know if it's an t derivative or not. Uh, here's the slope. I probably should have put that in a box right there. Second derivative for concavity, put that in a box. You don't need to write down all these in your notes. Maybe the uh, first one and then whichever of these two you liked. I think we have the rest of these in a box area. Yep. Here are the asteroid, arc length, and surface area. Okay. And I learned the hard way, or recalled the hard way that when you square root, so what was happening is we did square root, if you do square root of uh, a squared, if a is positive, that's a, but if a was negative, you have to make sure you absolute value it. Uh, so that's where our algebra went wrong. Okay, good luck on your homeworks.